Hi, welcome to the next episode of Introduction to Python. Um, I'm Thad, and let's get going. All right, so today we're going to start talking about lists. Uh, we've seen this before. Um, we've seen them in the very simple form of just kind of holding um, strings within within a, the biological container. Um, but this can hold variable data types. Um, it can also hold sublists if you need it to. Um, indexing is done the same way as strings is. Um, however, um, when you index a list, you'll get the element instead of the character. Um, so you can sort of think of a string as a list of characters, but not quite. Um, and length is also the same as strings. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we've got our simple names element, um, Thaddeus, Scarlet, and Samantha. So we've got a, a list of like three. So let's just make sure that the computer agrees with us. Yep, length three. Um, now, if we want to print the whole list, we can just tell it to print the list. And there, we'll go down and tell us that we've got a list of these bits. If, if we want to index one of them, um, pulling out Scarlet, we get Scarlet. Uh, what am I forgetting? And that's right over there. Um, so lists have operators, um, the in operator, the concatenation operator, the repetition operator, and then you can get slices. Um, that's incorrect. It only pulls up the first one. Let's take a look at that. All right, so the in operator is a Boolean um, operator um, expression. So if we want to see if um, Thaddeus is in names, this will give us a, a true false value. Um, it's true because it's in there. Um, however, one thing to note on strings is that it is case sensitive. So as you can see, um, since I've capitalized the H there, um, it no longer matches this. And so we come up with a false result. Um, if we wanted to add a variable here and we say, x is equal to Samantha. Samantha. Um, then we'll be able to find this one as well. And so as you can see, that, that's true. Um, so if we wanted to concatenate something, um, we could take names and we can say names equals names plus some form of list. Um, so either we can add a previously um, set list or we can make a new list. Um, so if we do x because we can put our variable in there and then we add Emily and Azrael. We'll now see that these are added to the list. Yes, see, there we go. Now, if we want to remove this extra Samantha, we know that that's at um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can just say del names 4. And I did the wrong one because that's names 3. So that we can see we, we've got rid of the extra um, Samantha that was in there. Now, if we wanted to add a number of extra, or if we wanted to repeat this, we can just say um, times three, and that will give us this result. As you can see, the Samantha, Emily, Azrael, Samantha, Emily, Azrael, Samantha, Emily, Azrael are all repeated the three times as we set here. Now also note that, um, like with strings, the repetition is of higher precedence than the concatenation. <coughs> All right, so slices. Um, 
so like pulling up a substring or like using a range, you can use um, this format to pull up um, several things. This is what this is going to pull up is one and up to but not including three. So we get skeleton cement out of this. Sorry. Let's see, skeleton cement there. Um, if we wanted to do backwards, we could do minus one. And we get astronaut. Yep. That's all good. Okay, so unlike strings, lists are mutable. So um, I can actually go through and I can change the um, the contents. So because we've got we've got Samantha listed twice here in succession. If we don't want that, we can go through and we can say um, names two. Equal Charlotte. And as you can see, the list has been mutated to include Charlotte in, in it now, and it still has our repetition going on past that. I've already shown you delete. Okay, so objects and references. Um, We've seen objects before, um, and we've seen references before, but uh, one thing that we need um, to keep in mind is that um, for efficient use of memory space, um, Python stores identical strings in one space and then just references it from different places. Because the strings aren't mutable, um, it can do this because it knows that um, as long as something is referenced to that string, it's never going to change. So if we do that, a equals banana, b equals banana, then if we print a is b, this will come up true. Correct. However, because lists are mutable, we can create two identical uh, lists, and they will they will be set, kept in separate memory spaces, so that we can mutate each one of them individually. Um, so a equals one, two, three. B equals one, two, two, three. If we print A is B, then we print A equals B, we'll get two different results here. So on the first one, um, A is B is false because they're, they're pointing to different memory spaces. But because they're equal to each other, this comes up true. Um, however, because they're in separate memory spaces, if we change um, B1 to 5, these will both come up false. So as you can see, they're they're set up differently, and I'll show you that by print A and print B. So as you can see, um, separate memory spaces, we can update each one individually. However, if we want to have multiple aliases to the same thing, or have um, the same variables pointing to the same thing, we can set an alias, which is just setting the variable to the variable. So this time, when we set um, the middle column to 5, it'll change it for both of them. A will be B, A will equal to B, and when we print A and B, it'll all come out the same. Okay, so if this leaves the list as a thing of, well, how do we copy? How do we copy a list instead of um, just assigning something to it? If we do this, which means 
all elements of the list. What's going to happen instead is we will create a new memory space and then all the contents of A will copy into B. So this would be like um, this would be like when it was um, A A equals two one two three and B equals one one two three. As you can see, A is B is false, A equals B is false, and only B has the change that we bid. Um, so some useful list methods. Um, append uh, adds a new item to a list. Insert allows you to insert an item into a particular position in the list. Um, pop allows you to pull a item off the list and put it into another variable. Sort will sort the, the variables. Um, that can get a little bit tricky if you've got mixed data types. Um, reverse reverses the order. Um, index returns the position of the first um, occurrence of the item. Um, that means if you've got like um, three copies of Samantha in there, then it'll only return the index of the first one. Um, count returns the number of occurrences of an item. So if you've got three Samanthas, it'll tell you you've got three Samanthas. And remove will remove the first occurrence of the item. Um, yeah. um, append, I think, is probably the most important one to remember because this is an easy way to just add a new item onto the list itself. Um, so we've seen lists and for loops before. Um, we can uh, use it in two ways. We can either do it for some variable in some variable in some list, and then we can just dump access the variable itself, or we can use some variable in some range of the list, and then we can access it through the index. Um, now, this is a, a fairly important uh, shortcut to remember: is that if you do a a range of the length of the um, if you do a range of the length of the list, um, then that will automatically give you um, every element in the list. Okay, so this has parameters. Um, prim, um, when we when we have a function that uses a list, Sorry. When we have a um, when we have a list that passes as a parameter to a function, the list itself is passed as a reference. So from within the function, you'll still be accessing the list itself. So as we can see here, we've changed the first element to zero. So from one to zero, and it prints zero. which can be very useful. Um, however, most of the time you're going to want to use what are called pure functions. Um, that changing of the original um, the original um, data is called the side effect. So we, we perform the function, and the side effect of the function is that our list is changed. Um, if we want to keep things as error-free error as possible, it's very often that we want to use pure functions. So a pure function um, is something that only allows the return values itself to be changed. It doesn't change anything in the original function. And yes. And we want to add one more thing. Print things. Okay, so what's going to happen this time is that we're going to create our list of things. Um, we're going to call the change function. The change function itself is going to create a um, copy of the list, change the new list, return it, and so now we'll have um, two separate lists that we can um, play with, as you can see.
Um, okay, so you can also um, use functions to produce lists, um, which works out pretty well. Um, I'm not going to show you this in, in particular, but um, if you create a range of something, you can create a list um, using the append function. Well, okay, sorry. First, you create an empty list, which is just the two square brackets um, against each other. Um, and then you can use a range to create a number of different types of, of um, things to add to a list. Um, this will become important in a little bit when we start talking about files. So one of the cool things is that you can um, turn a string into a list. Um, so if we want to um, split a list on Sorry, these are fancy parentheses or fancy quotes. This is one thing to watch out for when you're copying stuff from the web is that a lot of times um, you won't get normal quotes when you're copying stuff off the web. So you have to go back through and um, change them for normal, normal quotes. So, so I would see. Again, problems with copying stuff. Um, okay, so what, what we're going to have, <coughs> have once I put some. Sorry. Once I put some print statements in here. Is that we'll see that um, uh, in the individual cases that we will have different sets of lists. As you can see, um, when I'm splitting on white space, it um, pulls my name apart correctly. If I'm splitting on the double D, then we get everything around it using that as, as the delimiter. All right, we can do this in reverse so that if we have um, a list of strings, we can glue that back together um, using the join function. So getting rid of this one. So at this point, we've got the string that's been split into a list. Um, so now we've got the list. So what we can do is we can say create a glue. And then we put a comma there. And then what we will do is we create a, a new string, which will be name equals clue dot join name list. Then we will print that and we'll see that it works. As you can see here, um, we've glued it back together using the comma separator. All right, on to files. Um, so up till now, we've been using um, directly entered information into the computer. Um, however, if we want to be able to use data files, um, then we start using file handles and file methods. Um, so what I've got set up here is I've got this. This is the uh, one of the data file examples from the book. And if we want to access that, we create some variable. Um, I call it info this time, and then we want to open the file, and we want to read from it. Now we can either read 
or we can write. But if we if we write, it will erase the um, previous file and uh, start new. If we don't want to erase the previous file, then we can use append, which will add new lines to the end. So for now, we want to read. So that's going to open the file and give us access to it. Um, it's also important to note that once you're done with the file, you should close it. Um, some operating systems, uh, especially older computers, have problems when you've got too many open file handles. Um, and it's always better to just um, close them when you're no longer using them. Okay, so if we want to go through the file and, and read it, uh, what we can do is we can use a for loop. So for line in, in file, for print the line. Okay, so the, this line, which uh, you can name anything you want, uh, will take a line from the file and store it in that variable. And then we can, we can print it here to, to the line. So as you can see down here, we've printed everything. However, we've got these extra um, line breaks here that we don't normally don't want. So what we would have to do is we would have to strip the old line break if we're going to be adding new line breaks using the print statement. As you can see, we no longer have those extra line breaks. Now, other things that we can do with this is we can split it. Um, I'm going to do it on tabs. So now we've got a bunch of... No, not on tabs. We'll just split it. There we go. Now we have a bunch of lines that have been turned into um, lists that we can use. Um, so useful methods are write. Um, so it'll be in file dot write um, and then some sort of string that you can add to it. Don't forget that when you're using the write function that you have to add the character terms yourself. Um, read a number of characters into the file, um, read line, um, which you can do, um, which will then give you the line, which is a uh, sort of the equivalent of just doing this for, for one line. Um, so if we want to do that, we could do uh, All right, so this is just going to read the, the first line in the, in the, the file and then print it to the string. As you can see, it happened here. And of course, you can read multiple lines at a time if you wish, sorry, uh, by using the read lines command. So writing the files um, works in much the same way, except for are we going to create ourselves an out file? So we'll create ourselves the results file, and we want to write to that one. Um, so what we'll do there is we will read the end file, and then what we can do is we can do out file dot write temp. And that. Gives us this, which has copied the first one off of the previous file there and put it into here. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you're working with data files, you'll either be working with a set um, data standard that somebody else has created and that you can hopefully trust to do it, or you can create your own data standard 
it just means that you get to control what the data file looks like so that you control um, the input and output of, of different text. Um, one of the things that you want to do is kind of <coughs> think about that for a few minutes before you do that um, to make sure that um, it makes sense and, and that you won't have any data problems. All right, so this week, um, please read the chapters on lists and files, do the exercises. Um, Oxford students, you'll get your normal weekly email. Um, and if you've enjoyed the series, if you've enjoyed the video, um, please like, share, and subscribe. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments, and I will get back to you. All right, thanks very much. I'll see you next time.